The U.S. Coast Guard is preparing an alternate channel for vessels stuck in the port of Baltimore after last week's bridge collapse. Crews have begun work to remove the first chunk of the bridge from the water. Six people were killed in the incident when a cargo ship lost power, hitting one of its support pillars. Let's bring in our correspondent, Shihab Ratanzi. He's joining us live from Baltimore. So how are the cleanup operations going, Shihab? That really is only, only just beginning. Actually, you should be able to see what remains of the span of the Francis Scott Key Bridge behind me. As you mentioned, they did remove the first section so far of, uh, I believe it was about 200 tonnes worth of, of bridge that had fallen in into the, the river. It was removed by crane, put on a barge and, and taken away. But look, it's such an early stage, we're not really getting any real estimates of how long that that effort will take. As you say, I think now the main concern is trying to open at least some, some means of transport on the river. So the, the plan is to have at least one channel open in the next few days, they're saying, on the northeast of, of the main channel, which small vessels can use, uh, critical vessels for the, for the operation of the port, as well as just vessels who are involved in the salvage operation, uh, and then with further channels reopening uh, beyond that, but really not much not really a firm timeline, because I don't think they really don't know them themselves. As for the, 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 the dead, those who were killed in this, two, people, two construction workers are recovered, um, bodies were recovered, two were saved, but four bodies remain missing. But because it's raining and just because of the debris in the channel, it's, um, it's too difficult for divers actually to go down and try and recover those bodies. A lot of questions being asked, at least for those who are interested in, in, in workers' rights, labor rights, as to why these non-unionized, this non-union company who was doing construction on the bridge at the time had, didn't give these workers any means of communication through which perhaps they could have been warned, as well as the drivers on either side of the, of the bridge, as, just, before, just before it collapsed. And Shihab, as you're saying, it's, uh, we're only in the early stages of the cleanup operation. So what does that mean for the potential economic impact of this accident? It seems like the, the economic impact, it thought, will be mainly regional. And right now, the port is still open. There is still, there's still enough freight and containers to be processed. Uh, but obviously, there's no more coming in, though. So the question is, what happens to the eight to 15,000 workers who directly work at the port once that freight stops, once the, the processing is over? Not to mention, then, the some 175,000 workers who rely on the port for their livelihoods. That, that's logistics. Um, that's, uh, you know, all sorts of other other ancillary operations as well as just retail in, in the area. That's a big focus of various meetings today. In fact, there's a meeting just starting at the Longshoremen's Union not too far away from here about what happens, what happens after that. But actually, weirdly, nationally, it doesn't seem like there'll be a huge impact because there are four ports on the East Coast that can take these mega containers. It's thought that there are three others, Baltimore one, the three others, one in New York, one in New Jersey, one in Virginia, it's thought, will be able to handle the excess capacity. But that's actually another issue, potentially, for long-term damage for Baltimore, because the question is, once those, those companies that use Baltimore for freight to, to export mainly in the region, you know, I mean, they'll, they'll probably come back once the port is reopened. But what about those companies that are actually importing freight for distribution around the country. Once they've actually got new infrastructure in these other ports, will they come back? So that's another issue which is on the minds of those here and another reason why they want to get this port running again as soon as possible. Shihab, thank you very much for that. Shihab Ratanzi joining us live from Baltimore.